We are live at Sarge's Corner. How are we doing, gang? Good to see you all again. Excellent stuff. Um, we are broadcasting from Thousand Oaks today because uh, there's no internet in Burbank. So we're here. Glad you guys can check in. Adel's Bat 2795 is here. Botter, King Gamer, glad you're here. The guide is here. Your guide, nice. Good to see. Glad you guys are here. I don't see anything here. King Gamer, how you doing? Blank Ball is here. Deadpool is here. Yes. Brandon Solano. That's right. All right. Albert's here. Hi. How you doing, Albert? Pagan moment. Good to see you. TKP, wow, you here? Glad you're here, man. There's a, the two, two young ladies. Now, don't mistake them for my daughters because they're very young and beautiful. And I don't want you guys hitting on them, okay? You leave my girls alone. I was sick uh, and the cue on you. Yeah, so uh, casting directors, very great gals, just friends of mine. Um, we're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about. They're, we're going to catch up a little bit. You guys say, hey, podcast, how you doing, man? Um, Mikkel, good to see you're back. Wesley, yes, Matt Johnson, glad you're here. You know, what we're going to do is we're just going to talk like we talk normally, and then we're going to start talking a little bit of shop, and we do that. I'm going to open it up. I'll, I'll post a link. You guys can call in and ask questions, all right? That's the deal. Uh, any new Black Ops news? Yeah. I got some – so I have a very some, – some updates from the news for you guys. Um, we do have a confirmation that Commander David Mason will be joining the show on the 18th. And I have a very, very, very special uh, surprise guest that day as well. Uh, possibly the most important person ever in the Call of Duty Black Ops universe. The singular most important person will make a quick appearance. And I'm not going to tell you who that is. You got to check in for yourself. And then I just, uh, just got Gunnar Wright, uh, the star of Dead Space. One, two, and three. Um, he's going to be on the show probably a week later. So we have good, a lot of fun stuff coming up. Um, yeah, I've been tracking this new zombie thing, uh, Woods and Zombie. How do you guys feel about that? Pisses me off a little bit. Cody Recon, how you doing? John Birch, purple, almost easy. Good stuff. Hey, squad, how you doing? Thorstein, you're back. Nice. Uh, purple Reaper, good to have you here, man. Podcast, yeah. I'm, let me bring you on in a second. He, uh, let's see. Random Mobile Gaming. What's my opinion on Warzone? Which I should be in it. This is my opinion. Uh, Michelle, Hotto7, how are you doing? Yes, Menendez was great last week. You're watching Cold Water. Very proud of that film, man. Glad you watched. Alex Mason's back. Coyote Recon is back. Kyle Adamson's back. Pickled Lasagna. Love that name. Almost easy. Case Reaper, one, two, three, one. I know that name. Michelle Harris, why does it not piss me off about not being brought back to Black Ops? Because that's not my call, man. Uh, I would have loved to do the gig, but they don't owe me anything. So Spartan Souza, yes. I am drinking Pacifico today, my friend. That's what we're doing here. Hey, Jant Moore, how you doing? Can't wait to see your interview, buddy. This thing's great. Puckwit, what's up, man? Levo, Danny Fitzgerald. There you go. Garrett Peduto is back. Case Reaper, one, two, three, one. I am good, man. Matthew Johnson, I am good. I am good, good, good. All right. Wait until we get to 100 viewers so we can get the girls on appropriately because I want them to have a proper audience. Because this type of talent, this type of class deserves your full attention. And when you meet them, you know why. I'm I'm embarrassed to be seen this. I'm embarrassed for them to be seen in the same room. I mean, it's just, I don't know how they I don't know how they stand me. Look at me. I'm like a, I'm like a old drunk in a bar room, and he, these two classy young ladies come on my show. I'm 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 embarrassed for them, but that's how good friends they are of mine. Mustang zero seven seven two. How you doing, Wesley? FPS. Let's see. Does Darwin smell like eggs? Yes, he does. Gerard Eddy, yes, yes. Welcome back. We're at 73. We're getting close. We're getting close. Uncle Henry Gillette, how you doing, buddy? Shogun is cool. How's my weekend? It's still going, man. It's still going. Mr. Meaner, hello. 
You don't think Zombie 70 the Dexter Zombie Storyline? No, the new Zombie Storyline is very new. Dark Knight Gaming, how you doing, brother? Pickle Lasagna, maybe the best name today. I, 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 I can't even think of that. The meme guy is back. All right. Zemore and Shamoon Reacts. How you doing, my friend? One of my favorite interviews ever with that kid. He's a good, he has a good channel. Go check it out. Gotcha, Barry. Yes. Gotcha Records. Nice. Zemore. All right. 75, and I'm calling the girls in. You guys ready? You want to meet Rose Rosen and Kim Swanson? They're going to tell you about some realities to be in this business. Cause don't, don't take it from me because, you know, look at me, you know. But take it from them because they are they, they know what they're doing. They're the people that I try to be nice to because if I'm not nice to casting directors, nobody will be. So, <laughs> all right, here they are. The lovely Rose Rosen and Kim Swanson. Welcome, ladies, to the Sarge's Corner Show. I'm glad Hi you're there. here. Hi, thanks for having us. Yes, uh, thank I can't, you. I, I'm so honored to have you two here. Um, Rose, I've known for a couple of years. We kind of, well, we actually, we didn't hit it off right away. You, you put me through the ringer for the first <laughs> month. I was, I met Rose because we were doing a, uh, I was doing a, a, a talk for a, a film festival down in, in Tampa. And she, and she wasn't having it. That's just some knucklehead or some, when I'm some friend of a friend recommended. She said, oh my God, another knucklehead actor. And so, <laughs> hello. Hey. So what are you gonna do? I don't. And it just didn't go well. She scared <laughs> the shit out of me. What she did. So <laughs> that's what we're paid for. <laughs> we have the scary part and the nice part, and you know we have to put scary part up first for actors. Unless you're in the room auditioning for us, then we. Try and be nice because we're all on the same team, right, Kim? Why, why the intimidation factor, Rose? I, I don't why know. The <laughs> why the flex on these poor actors? Comes with the job description. No, but seriously, it, well, no, I think, I think, and you could, you could say what you want, Kim, but I think we, we get a lot of inquiries for everything and we just have to weed it out. We have to have some sensibilities. And sometimes it's putting the other person a little on notice that we're watching. <laughs> what we get on a regular basis, we were just saying this yesterday, that like on a regular basis, multiple emails and phone calls to somebody, hey, you know, I'm connecting you to so-and-so. They're CC'd on this email because I thought you could help them out and mentor them. Well, you know, if we did that for every person that, emailed us like we wouldn't have time to do our jobs that we're paid to do right you know and everybody has a friend everybody has my cousin's uncle's brother has a his he knows a guy who's trying to be an actor and he's really good you'd love him and you know right if I, if I hear one more time oh you'd love him <laughs> i mean that, that, that's it so so you fell into that category at <laughs> <laughs> and and i like to tell actors if I spent all the time answering every text, every email, every inappropriate contact with me, I would not have the time to find you guys jobs. And that's the, that's the big thing. Well, that and inevitably there's somebody that like, you'll go, okay, I'll help them out a little bit. And then you really regret it. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Every 10 minutes, it's another email. Hey, what do you think about this headshot? Hey, what do you think about this? Hey, what should I do now? What if I do this? Well, should I say this though? Should I do like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't start because it never ends. Right. Figure yeah. it out, dude, figure it out. <laughs> right. You know, and then, and the truth is, if we're your friend, then we're your real friend. That's that's the, the other side of this coin is if we end up being friends, then we're friends. But other than that, we're not. <laughs> you go. And it's the only way to be. <laughs> introduction says, Rose and Kim look like they know how the business work. I like it because it's something I should do. Hmm. If you have any questions, fellas or gals, let this throw them out. I'll put you up there. <laughs> this is good. When these three, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Irish podcast. Cheers to you, awfully Irish. <laughs> they, they are my they are my Irish nemesis. I'm gonna bring them on in a second just to just because you know, 
I think I, awfully Irish has already started with the beer. <laughs> so. yeah. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Too funny. <laughs> so you, why not? In the meantime, you ask us some questions, James. Well, um, I would love for James to tell us his story about his audition process with um, Call of Duty. That is an interesting story. I think story. they have heard that story like 4,000 times. Mm -hmm. uh, I get asked that a lot. Well, let me ask you this. So when you went in for the actual audition, I know it was some hoop jumping to, to actually get in there as they were wanting a name. Once you went in for your audition, what kinds of things did they have to do? Because as we talked before, I have a dear friend who casts a lot of video games, and she's talking about like these guys have to be able to crawl on the floor the right way. Right. Yeah. So what all did you have to do in your audition? Well, what we're talking about. Okay, first of all, uh, this is this is uh, Rose is. I'm connected to Rose because of Bobby Layton, who's on the show on Thursday. One of my one of my good friends. He's a, a legendary comic book artist. So that's how I know Rose. Kim, he's the best. Kim actually knows the casting director for Call of Duty, huh? Does that guy's interested you now? Her name is. Can I tell, say her name? Her name is Ivy Eisenberg. It's it's on record. She's so welcome. yeah, I, and Kim and Ivy are are friends, fast friends. So we're all kind of a very incestuous little pod here all together. Um, oh, it's, but that's Hollywood, isn't it? Let's let's just say that. I mean. Everybody is Kevin Bacon. They think Kevin Bacon is the only one that that happens to. But literally, yeah. everybody's one. Person yeah, you're you're, you're 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 twelve feet apart from everybody. And yeah. what happened with Ivy was, I I wasn't sure was like I had met Ivy before, but not that often. And I was a little indignant that they actually made me read for. Are, are you kidding me? I just I've been working on this character for six months. You basically you your, your entire breakdown describes me. And yet, and so she started giving me some directions. And I look at her like, thank you, Ivy. Thank you. I think I got it. And I just ignored everything she said because, it, it be, well, only, only because I had been doing this. For, I already know this guy. I've been playing this character for six months. So she's telling me, and I'm glad she's like, I'm so, oh, she is sad. Like, I know what they want. I know what I did. And every time she says that, I know that actor's going to try to do it. And I know exactly what I want to do and how it works. And it, 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 you know, obviously it worked out that way. But it was interesting because you know, I again, casting director's job is just so hard because you know, it's like it's you just you you really casters are really beholden to the people they're employed to. So they're trying to and and, and I've been how many how many sessions have I have you had to come out to act? Okay, listen. Stop looking at, you know, there's like a general note that people, the same mistake they're making over and over. So it's like a general note. And I love hearing those because I know that everyone's screwing up. And if I'm not do if I can figure out what that thing is that no one else is doing, I'm already over the hurdle, you know? And, but it's like, there's, it's a hard, it's a hard gig because you've got to look good. I mean, the people you bring in have got to look good or else you don't look good. Right. Am I wrong? Like, exactly. if no question. People in and nine shit the bed. They're going to question whether they want you to come back. But they if you bring 10 people and nine make it really hard to make a decision, you've done your job. Right. No, that's right. There's so many great uh, – and that's when they're going to hire you again. But if you guys you know, don't get that performance from people – and it's really hard to screw up. It's really easy to screw up an audition. It, it just takes three seconds to screw up an audition, right? Yeah. Less oh, yeah. than. <laughs> We talk about the details of entering the room could screw you up. I mean, it's just like speak about that. I, I have a theory on that. Go ahead. What's your theory on that? No, I mean, if you walk in the room in a certain way and say something within the first 10 seconds, it's over for you in our minds. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, you know, Kim and I have talked about that. And it's just the truth. It's a human nature. And so you just have to be respectful and walk in and do your work and leave. Well, 99% of the time, you can tell the moment they walk in the room, just their essence, because it's what we do for a living. I mean, right. we get paid to judge pretty people. Let's be honest. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's, you know, wow. but we have the best job in the world because we also are, we get to be that gatekeeper that helps people get to the next step in their dream, yeah. you know? And not many people are in the part of, get to have a part in making dreams come true. And that's what we do every single day. Which is a pretty awesome gig to have. We spread the sparkle. 
us. We yeah. spread the sparkle. I love that <laughs> so much. I love that so much. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just a hard thing to master because you want to walk in true to who you are. But I know for myself, if I don't smile a whole lot, then it starts to room off. Because you know, most casting directors are female you know, or gay. I mean, there aren't a lot of male casting directors. I, I, I think I know two out of the hundreds. I know, I think I only know, know two that are straight. And it's like walking into a group of guys is different than walking in with a group of women. You just have, especially when you're playing dangerous roles, you have to be able to show that shift. You walk in the nicest, most harmless person, and then you become a, 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 a you know a slashing killer. Then you take it off again because if not, again, it's there's it's it's a tricky it's a tricky thing to understand how to, to master that. You got to know how to, you know. And I plan. I always have three things. I have I have a real short joke planned, and I have a you know an answer. How, How's your day? I am so groovy that always, that's my thing. I'm groovy, man. I'm just groovy. And it, it gets, it's just a nice way of breaking the ice. It doesn't take up anybody's time. It says everybody at ease. I'm groovy. How you doing? Good. Let's, any, any questions? Wait, and then you tell a joke? You do that not is tell a joke. joke. There's my joke. Oh, oh thank God. No. <laughs> Well, I mean, that, the thing is, like, you, you, you got to get right. And, and two guys walk in a bar. No, no the, uh, I mean, wait, like that hasn't happened. Seriously, <laughs> people yeah. come in, say, "How you doing? I'm groovy. Let me tell you a story." And like five no, minutes later, no, no, their, no, no, their no, story, no, their no, joke, their no. intro, they used is, up all their time. That now, is the. the if, the, I let you, have, if I let you audition, yeah. which I will. Then yeah. it puts me behind schedule, and it's yeah. very upsetting. Right. Or Simple. worse than that is the, is the person who you just say, how are you today? And they go, oh, my gosh. So you wouldn't believe I got in this car accident. No, never. And you can't and do that. This big yeah. no. Like, it was a rhetorical question. I know. <laughs> no. We don't want to know that. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not like we're not compassionate, but it's just the wrong place to say it. Even if you got into a car accident on the way there, tell your agent. Tell your agent, unload that stuff on your talent agent. Don't unload it on us. Well, we got and you know, we have a limited amount of time in the room with each person. It's so, so little time. You know, if we've scheduled like typically like say two people every 15 minutes, so you're only getting seven and a half minutes. Do you really want to use up four minutes of that telling us about your car issue? And yep. now you only have three minutes left yep. for your actual audition, you know? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's terrible. That's why that having a quick one liner, open it up. No more than four words. I'm groovy. Let's go. You know, that's, that's <laughs> in, make, you, you got to figure that out for yourself to how to do that. Right. And, and the creepos who think they should come in in character. And it's like the character of a serial killer to use your example, James. Like, oh, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Do that. That, that, it looks that, like that. a serial killer, though. Yeah, doesn't I it? Today, I, I, that's thank you, Rose. That's why I love you so much. <laughs> love you so much for that. All right, I'm going to put the link in. I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions on the sidebar here. So I'm going to. I want I'm to, seeing this on the bottom. Is the studio looking to cast the actor who best portrays those trails they are looking for? Or are they looking to find different, unique takes, interpretations, e.g., for casting Frank Woods? Yes and yes. Explain. They want both. I mean, they want, you know, they, they haven't, they often have something in their brain, right? Right. And they're always not the best at explaining to someone like Rose or I what it is that is, what that picture is. Well, you know, I love when they say somebody middle aged. Well, what does middle aged mean to you? You know, um, we want a grandma. Well, grandma can be one in the spectrum to the other. We want, you know, like, you know, it's hard to pin them down and get them really specific, but they have a really specific picture in their brain most of the time. But often the, the person they're picturing is not always the best actor. So right. the the physicality that they're thinking. So you've got to try and find the nice middle ground for them where they get where they feel they walked away with both. Kim describes it perfectly. We we have to like directors tend to be introverts. They're not all that gregarious. We have to kind of pull what's because all we're doing is making their vision into a person basically into a great actor that's gonna do the job portray that that scene um and we just need to 
get that information out of them. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth though, it really is, but that's our job and and get as many words that, that can transfer so that we find the right person for them. Because right, a grandma could be 50, could be 80. That's right. a big difference. Yeah. And oddly enough, every director thinks they're a really great director, but right. they're not. <laughs> you know? And they all think they're really great communicators, but they're not. <laughs> there are some who are good. But I would say maybe 30% that are really good communicators in general. You know, they'll they'll give direction or even like in callbacks. I'm sure you've seen this, James, where they give direction. And you're like, what the heck was like? Oh. I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And yeah. there's a casting director. We're trying not to step on their toes, but trying to like guide them as to how to direct this actor so they can get what they need out of them. It's tough. Yeah. That is <laughs> so TJ179, who's the best actor you've ever hired? I wouldn't say. I, I think it's rude to all the other ones. You, Kim? <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like that. I've hired some really good ones. My personal favorite, though, is when I find an actor who hasn't done anything yet. Right. Like, I love finding that diamond in the rough that no one else has found. Like, yeah. I, I will often see actors who have, like, very little on their resume, but I just have a good feeling about them. And, you know, there's a, I won't name names because I don't know if she wants her name named, but, um, but there was a girl who I found and I put her in toy commercials. I put her in probably 10, 15, 20 toy commercials as a kid. And then she did a feature in the Midwest. Then she went out to LA and now she's one of the stars of a series, you know, right. but like, and, and oddly enough, when we hired her, the, um, uh, the exec producer didn't like her, didn't want her. And we really had to talk him into it. It was a real battle for him to see she had what it took. Yeah, and that's when that's when it's nice to have a casting director on your side. Mm -hmm. You know, here's one. This question for you. Oh, that's a good one. Um, you really wanted for voice acting. You need to take voiceover class because it is different than being on camera. There's a lot of things you need to know, like how far do you stand from the mic? How does that work? How do you not pop P's and T's and hit your S's and how do you color it in such a way that people can understand you and they, you know, they get sucked into that world without, you know, getting a little too weird, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, um, it kind of depends on you. I mean, we'd had this conversation the other day that like, I love working with former athletes because they're so fearless and you tell them to do something and they're so used to being bossed around by a coach. They go, okay. And they're in, they don't argue with you. They don't go, well, but I don't know where my motivations from. Well, here's your motivation. It's called paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, but you know, um, for me, like you, you really should be studying voiceover for a good six months or so specifically in voiceover. And it's going to take that long to get good enough to have a VO demo reel. First yeah. of all, and you'll want to have several different VO demo reels. You'll have and one. First impression is everything. Right. You, you, gotta be better, you better be good because if you walk in and screw up, they're going to remember you that way. Right. That's true. And you'll you'll have like a general vid, uh, VO demo reel. But then like if you want to do animation, that's a whole separate thing you have to do. That's a completely another art, you know, new art form on top of it. So you study that too. If TKP's got a question. How many actors did you did you have to audition for a role like like the, the, at the magnitude of a, of a Woods character, like a franchise central character? How many how many actors would you go through? To, for I mean, a, that could be anything from a hundred to a hundred thousand. I mean, it wow. really depends on what that director is needing to do with that role. Right. Well, and it also depends on um, our budget, how much time we have to actually look for that person. Um, it depends on you know, how specific they are and, you know, like, does it, are we only looking for someone in this market or that market or can it be a nationwide search? You know, if I post something nationwide, I'm going to get tens of thousands of submissions and I know, it. you know, that takes a lot of time to get through. So yeah. uh, the Vikings wants to know, so do, do auditions tend to go a certain route with a set script or do actors come in with their own scenes, like a monologue to play out? No, that's always, wow. it's always a set <laughs> script. We send it to a head. So you come in and, and you're rehearsed and ready to go right when you come in the door. But I now, think with that we, being said though, you should you need to know that script, but you also need to be pliable because I, you if I we if I say no no, I want it more this way or that way. If you've only rehearsed it this one way, 
Right. And I try to get you to change it up a little bit. You often are usually stuck there and we can't direct you. We can't get you to do anything else. I think to talk about monologues. I think he's Vikings actually from Norway, so he's English. Uh, I think so about monologues. It's, I think it's always good to have, because sometimes with theater, you often get asked to do a yeah. monologue. Well, you want, I, always want to have a good one in your back pocket. Yes. In, in LA, though, monologues tend to be used more for obtaining an agent or manager more so than an actual audition because we need to see you in that role doing the words that were written for that role to know if you can handle those words. That's what they're great, paying us for. It's a great question for you. Do you think casting directors take into consideration popularity when hiring an actor? 100%. We look at, we look at all their uh, social media. We talk about it openly. We, you know, it's a hundred percent part of the conversation we have. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge part, you know, and it, it boils down to bankability. You know, yeah. it's just like, you know, if, if you go out and buy a car and you know that historically that car will run 100,000 miles and without a single repair or anything, you know, it's a good car. But you could buy another car that no one's heard of before and it might be good, but you don't know it has no warranty to it, so to speak. You're going to go with the car that, you know, is going to make it 100,000 miles. It's the same thing with actors. You're going to want the, the actor who's going to carry you across that finish line. I'm not going to compare it to a car. It's, I, it's, I, well, look it's, what I grew up with. I mean, <laughs> no, it's true. Marius Knight wants to know, what is the toughest part of your job? Finding that needle in a haystack is always the hardest thing for me. Sometimes keeping up with technology every single day can be hard. Sometimes I mean, just the fact that we're an island and we're doing it all by ourselves so often is hard. How about you, Kim? I think the hardest part is telling someone they didn't get it. Oh, you know, see, I don't do that. Well, like if you've got oh, it, I hate that. You know, I once hate you that. Hand, Go ahead. Well, you, you hate that. I don't tell them they don't get it. Or I, it's like, it's like, I, I finally get around to the point where I don't care anymore. But when I first started, I used to make me crazy not to know like, okay, I had my third call back. And I haven't heard anything like it's that. That's really that gets really disturbing sometimes. If, but once you figure out and you work enough, where okay, you know, you just got to move on to the next thing as fast as you can. But there's also say, hey, get some feedback. What happened on that? That was a really good read. What happened? Oh, they 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 went another with the character. Oh, they they a lot of times. Oh, they just cut the part. In TV, I always get oh, they they cut that part out. You know, trying to save some money. So that that's a real. That's I love that. Hang on. Let's see. I have another good question here. Here you go. Uh, how do you, do you recommend question? people deal with nerves? Like how? Because uh, podcast is actually uh, Gerard is he's doing some. Uh, he's a world champion. He's world, world class archer, and he's doubling. I think Matt Damon in the film in Ireland now, and he's doing motion. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, dealing with nerves. I mean, a couple things is. You know, look, I think Rose probably feels the same on this, chime in Rose, but for me, like inevitably every actor is gonna come in, they're gonna have a bad day. I mean, that's part of the human, you know, experience is we all have good days, we all have bad days. And so when an actor comes in and I can tell they're a nervous wreck and they're having a bad day, I'll give them another shot, you know, um, in the room that day. But if they're just completely off that day, I won't hesitate to bring them in for another job in a couple of weeks or whatever they're right for just because you know we all have off days. Um, but by the same token, some one of the best things to do is just train, 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 train. When you've trained a lot, yes. muscle memory kicks in yes. and you just go. You know, yes, you just, yes, yes. when you learn to focus, you block everything out around you and you're just in the moment, you're not nervous, you know? No. It's true. If you well, know stuff, you will get better. Also breathing, yoga, you know, you, you have to do what's right for you to calm yourself down, but you have to be calm. There's, you have to know your stuff and just be confident. I used to have terrible stage fright and look at us now. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget though too, like nerves, it depends on what you call them. Nerves are just really, it's another word for energy. Yes. Got stored up. And if you learn to direct that energy, then it's not nerves anymore. Right. And you can use it to your benefit. So don't think of his nerves. Think of his energy. You need to 
like good present point. out in your performance. So George Braun has a question. Do actors who have good looks get priority over actors who aren't as good looking? Certainly not. I don't think at all. And in, in this day and age, I find it to be the opposite in some, in many regards. Um, directors want people to look authentic, real. These are the, you know, these are the words they're using. They used to use aspirational. That's kind of going out the, the door. And maybe aspirational is just looking typical, if you will. The, I don't know, but aspirational version of you. So like, for example, if you're doing commercial work, right? So you can be the short, heavy set, bald guy. That's totally cool. But but do you come in looking sloppy? Right. Like, like you probably so, should have showered and shaved before you showed up today. That's a different right? that's a different story than being, you know, six foot three, 190 pounds and you know, an eight pack. So right. it, it's not about being pretty, it's about being the best version of you. Right. Follow all directions. Be crisp. Not that kind you of know, eight pack day. Don't I have, I have, a, I have a six set. pack. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you should look your best. If you know, wear a little makeup. If if you're gonna sweat, bring some powder. <laughs> little things like that. Just know what what's gonna make you look the best. And you have so many tools in your house. You have a phone that can show you about what you're gonna look like. You're probably doing a self tape anyway now for an audition. You shouldn't be going in. I. So you have all the controls. You can get your lighting straight. You could you could do it a hundred times. I mean, I don't want to say when I asked you for a self tape what the count was on the top. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a unique way of doing things. But good for you. This is not about me. Uh, <laughs> Atomic Playboy wants to know, what would you say is a key characteristic in a character that you are looking for when you're hiring? Follow directions. Easy to work with. Now, first off, I mean, if you didn't bother to read the instructions I put together for you before you walk through the door, you're not going to bother to handle all the instructions given to you on set. No. It's such a job. It's like people think that talent can transcend uh, unprofessionalism. And the truth is it cannot. Well, reading is fundamental. Yes. <laughs> Read all of those instructions. Kim and I say this over and over again, but we can't say it enough. Apparently people don't always listen to us. And we don't sit and type up these instructions because we have nothing better to do with our time and we just want to make you miserable. We're, we're writing a roadmap for you right. to succeed. We're, We're talking first of all trying to know. take from the director and what he's telling us and trying to interpret it for you and 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 have your experience in the room be streamlined and just follow it. Just do it. Here's a job. TJ wants to know what's the favorite part of your job? Well, that I'm sure we'd both answer the same thing is giving yeah, telling them that they have the job, right? Yes. Yeah, and and being in the room with actors. Like, I mm -hmm. love, love, love. I'm, I always read opposite actors. I don't hire readers because then mm -hmm. you can see if they really can connect with an actor or not. So I love to read opposite actors. And I it's been really fun because I've read, you know, opposite of some, you know, Academy Award winning actors, which is so fun. But, so fun. and some of them are terrible at auditioning, but, <laughs> but they're good <laughs> actors, you know? <laughs> But those, those moments when the when characters truly connect, yeah. when when suddenly nothing else in the room exists, right. and they can transcend transcend you to that place in the script, like I like when you find that, and like I just even think about, it, like I have chills now. I'm like, yes, I found my person. You know, love that. Yeah, couldn't so agree Ma more. Master Z wants to know: Have you ever had an actor that was just impossible? Oh. So work. many of them. Yeah. <laughs> Blacklists are real and absolutely you do oh, something unprofessional. One guy, James Burns. Oh, he was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. Believe me. There, 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 there's some out there who agree with that. I'm not I'm not lying. I've been a pain in the ass in my history. So Please. Yeah, yeah there, there have been some who are truly impossible and you want to smack oh. them upside the head and say, Who the heck raised you? But yeah, no kidding. You know. Here's one. What do you so Nate Nate to the eight wants to know what do you look for in a voice actor? 
It depends on what we've been asked to find. You know, I just, I just did a voiceover audition uh, about a month ago um, for a major studio. Um, it's for a feature film that's being released soon. And um, so they had some things that were going to go into the YouTube, you know, uh, marketing of it. And they, they had a specific, they wanted to be female. They wanted it to sound like this age range, someone peppy and this and that and not, and kind of quirky, kind of like the original cast members, but not too much like them. And like, you know, they just had this crazy list of stuff. And so we're just listening to try and find that sound, you know? And when I submit, when, when actors uh, send in their VO auditions to me and I forward it to my client, I don't ever forward a headshot because I want my client right. to, to judge them by the sound, not by what they look like. Oh, good point. Yeah, so definitely. Kyle Jones wants to know, Kim and Rose, what is your favorite Treyarch game? Kim, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty Black Ops 1, you 2, and 4. take this question. I, 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 I decide between Black Ops 1, 2, and 4. I just, I can't decide. <laughs> this is why she's a champ. This is why, this is why, this is why she's on the channel today, gentlemen. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what, although I'm not a big gamer, I am familiar because I have a 24-year-old son who loves them. So, oh, yeah? So I am, I am, I'm not. Did I'm you tell a, him you're hanging out with Woods today? I did not actually. You, you should mention it to him, guys. Should <laughs> she mention it to him? We think he, think a, a 24 year old gamer would like to know his mom is hanging out with Sergeant Frank Woods today. Do you think oh, his, friend, his friends already tell him I'm the coolest? So, oh, okay. all right. So Gabriel wants to know what is the most common mistake actors make. Um, starting actors make. Um. Assuming that being pretty is all that we're care, all we care about. You, yeah, that they don't study, they don't train, they don't do any research. They just think, oh, all my friends say I have a great voice and they have, I have a great look, and they just think they can just do it. But you know, do you want an accountant who does that? No. A doctor who does that? No. Do you want, uh, you know, would you expect a professional baseball player to just show up on the field and go, I'm really good at this. My friends say I can really throw. That's not how it works. Like you have to. You have to be willing to work. You have to be willing to train. And you also have to understand you have to start at the bottom. You know, you're not going to just get off the bus in Hollywood and be awarded a starring role in a feature film, you know, worth millions of dollars. It doesn't happen like that. Not going to happen. James, do we have a tactical glitch on Kim or is it just on my screen? She looks frozen, but I can hear her. Are you frozen, Kim? I don't think I am. You okay. are. I'm going to. Kim, I'm going to. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reactivate you. There. Either was, back. I, was I wrong or right? I don't know. Good. I don't know. Here you go. Here's, here's another one. Okay. Yeah, come across. Of all the many actors that you have met and come across, which which of those stood out professionally and above all as a person? Um, for me, it's kind of a tie between a couple. There you go. Um. On the female side, Heidi Klum is amazing. She is the person you see on television. That's the person she is. So genuine, so kind, so lovely, so humble. She's just amazing. Um, so, on, what? Sorry, go ahead. And on the male side of things, um, two of my favorites I've worked with, uh, Danny Trejo. Love is Danny. I just love the you. nicest guy on the face of the earth just a good human and um george lopez is also wonderful yeah i've heard that about george he's a nice guy so mm -hmm. i have i have a i have a bunch of folks lining up to talk to you you want to say say hi for a couple for a few minutes sure and, and you can hang up anytime you want so let me know so this is dalen i i guys if you don't have your pictures here i can't put you up because i i can't here's uh here's his private private fire brigade yeah Hello. Hello, buddy. How you doing, man? Hi. Good. So I was the one who asked the question about the voice acting classes, because I could do a real gravelly voice when I want to. Mm hmm. That's good. That's a good so start. When so when I'm thinking of like here, Tank Dempsey, I can go immediately to that voice, which is not that hard. Or if I want to think of Rick Tolfin, I can do as a German voice. 
That's awesome. The, the great thing now is because of the pandemic, which although I wouldn't wish that on anyone, the, the great thing is there are so many people are offering classes online via Zoom now. Like you can take, no matter where you are, you don't have to be in New York or LA to be able to take amazing top-notch classes and learn. Now, so, are, you guys, are you guys doing a class online? I, I'll put it in the link for these guys. Are you guys doing classes? I'm all? not. I have a friend who does, but um, I don't. I don't do classes generally. Hey, Brigade, I'm kicking you off, man. Goodbye. Talk to you later. Later. Bye. Bye. Here's Henry Gillette. We love Henry. Hey, Henry. How you doing, hi, brother? Hi, Henry. I'm doing hi, Henry. Good, man. Uh, hi. Henry's in Pakistan, oh, so by the way. Sorry? I just You're said nice. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, just, I wanted to ask you, uh, and thank you for doing this, James. This is so exciting. Uh, but, uh, but I wanted to ask you, like, I, I'm from Pakistan, so, but I imagine myself being more of like a chameleon actor or, you know, just a whole bunch of fantasy things, but I feel like the only thing that's stopping me from going to Hollywood is the fact that it's my nationality or the color of my skin or, you know, my voice, but I feel like I want to be able to do things that could, you know, uh, surprise people, you know, but, you know, is that, do you think that, is there any advice for me to, you know, should I still go achieve, you know, something that's greater than, you know. Okay. I think the nationality and the color of your skin is a positive. Right. It's a positive. I think it may behoove you to once again, dive into your voice and get some non you know, if you're coming to America, then get, a, a standard American accent, whatever that is, Middle America, and work on that. And I think I think you're awfully sellable. I think yeah, oh, you yeah. have a very marketable look for, for starters. Um, oh, and I'll just, I'll just get a, a little um, uh, what's the word I'm not uh, based in faith here for a moment. Argue for your limitations, and they shall become yours. All right. Yeah. yeah. So um, you know whatever you do, like. I told my kids with what, whatever it is they want to pursue, go do it. Do not look back when you were 50 and say, I wonder if, should I have, yeah. could I have, would I have, what would have happened? Don't do that. Dive in because let's talk worst case scenario. Let's say you get to LA and it doesn't work. The sun yeah. will still rise tomorrow and then you'll know. Like, so what? Yeah. Yeah, you gave it a shot. Big deal. Like it's, it's okay to fail. For me, what's not okay is not try. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. That, that means yeah. a lot. That's something that it's been in my mind for a long time. Yeah, thank you that. so much. That means yeah. a lot. Oh, my brother. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Do it. Do it. Bye, Bye, Bye. This is this is my this is this is this is uh, the Irish podcast. I got you. Show your face. He is this, great. This young man here is a world champion archer. No nice. joke. And he's the one who's working on the movie with yeah. uh, what's his name, uh, Matt, Damon. Damon. Matt Damon. Bravo! Yeah. Yeah, that was like uh, twenty minutes ago, James. <laughs> this is it. This is yeah. the guy. He's got a great podcast, uh, by the way. You should go on. You should have him on your podcast, man. The, the, these girls are great. Yeah. Make yeah. I, I watched I watch the podcast you guys did together. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. No question. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, no, I'm brain farting here now because there's pressure. Normally I just talk shit with James. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, so you sit by the side. I'm going to roll. Get your ideas got around. I'll roll through some other uh, guys, right? Sit tight, Jerry. Hey, Pagan. How you doing, man? Oh, talk to my ladies. Wow. Oh, fuck. All right. Get, that's the, get rid of that. No swearing with the girls here. Who's next? Let's go. <laughs> hey, Dalen. How you doing? And you're gone. Okay. Case Reaper, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, what's up? What's up, man? I just wanted to ask, um, if I would like want to uh, voice act in a game or something or, um, like that, how can I do that? Uh, I, you're in, in Saudi Arabia, right? No, I'm from Bahrain. Bahrain. Like near, Bahrain. near it, near it. Yeah. Okay. The great thing now is that so many auditions are self-recorded. So you, you can do them, especially when, with voice, you can be anywhere in the world. And if you have a decent setup at home, you can even self-record the end product, which we've like, been doing. Uh, what the setup do I need? 
Um, well, again, those are things you'll learn by taking a class. So Google the heck out of good uh, VO classes online and just start kind of going down that rabbit hole of finding out what's there. You'll want a really good mic. You'll need a soundproof room or area. You'll need, you know, because sound absorption is really important. Yes. You'll need some way to upload it, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but you can, if you Google around, you'll find so much information. Um, and there's a, another good actor who does like a lot of voices and that's Bob Bergen. Do you know Bob James? I don't know. Okay. Really great guy. And he, you can follow him on Facebook, whatever he's teaches voice and stuff, but he's like, he's the voice of Porky Pig and bugs, all kinds of things. He, a bazillion different voices, top notch. And he has a lot of information on his page too, uh, to help. Mm -hmm. actors. So. Yeah. So, okay. Like m maybe if I voice act or something and they accept me, what will happen next? Well, you, once you learn how to do it and you get a setup, you'll start submitting yourself to projects. You, you know, you submit through, through various platforms that casting directors use. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you for, uh, hey, for Case. stay in touch, man. Talk to you later. Later. Thank you. Bye. This is, uh, Kyle Jones. We love Kyle. Hey Kyle. How you doing my brother? What's up Woods? Hello everyone. Hi Kyle. <laughs> You got a question for us here, Kyle? Well, yeah, a bit. Like, what is the favorite Harvard, like, with blood and go? What is your favorite? Say again, what, I, I what? don't understand that. Uh, what is your favorite jump scare and go? Like, a horror film. See, I, Kyle, you, you're, from, you're from Wales, right? right? Yes, I am. Yes, yeah, so it's about a horror film he was talking about. <laughs> Yeah, blood and gore. I, 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 what's your question? question? Oh. Yeah, that's my question. <laughs> uh, well, what's your anyway. What? You asked uh, something from the TV. Like horror, like jump scare. Jump scare. So I like, think he's asking what's our favorite horror film. Is that what you're asking, Kyle? Yeah. Oh, it's not something I watch very much. You oh, can't, right. can't. The Shining. It's not my favorite genre by far, but I've passed a few of them, so. I, I, I gotta cut you off. You, you've got your, uh, your uh, on your reverberates. I'm, I'm, I'm kicking you off. Sorry, Kyle, man, you, you had the, uh, your microphone was looping around, making everybody crazy. Too much right. going on, it was loud. <laughs> All right, Gerard's back. How you doing, Gerard? You get, hey, you, yeah, I was thinking of a question. Uh, right. Okay, so I, I do archery, uh, like Jim said. Um, and I've, I've tried to like sell that to different people when I'm trying to get a role. And I, I've, I've managed to do it like kind of with the thing I'm doing at the moment. But uh, how do you reckon I should go about it? Because so far, not so good. I mean, like, you know. To people who are doing medieval stuff or whatever. When we look for things like archers, it's, it's, it's searchable in the, the actor's database. So you got to make sure that that is in the right box and that you're a professional archer and put notes in your profile in all of the acting platforms yeah. and you should be on all of them. Well, and also when you have a chance to submit, most of the time, uh, if we need something really specific like that, um, we will we'll click to allow you to include a note with your submission. And right. we can see that note before we even look at your resume. So always include you know, a note current professional archer or whatever that pertains to the role because that will catch your eye enough to really look at the headshot resume all that good stuff too and so make sure your agents know that, that you have yeah. this skill right the other thing is is you know yeah. um if, if you're interested in doing more film you know any organizations or anything you're a part of make sure they're aware of it because when we need a really specific skill set we know we're not always going to find it like through the typical platforms that actors are on. And so we will search like organizations, groups, you know, places where people train to find that. So um, let them know that you're interested. So like if I was to call one of those places, they go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got this guy Gerard who loves being in films. He was just in this other thing with Matt Damon. Let me connect you with him. And For then sure. I would be able to find you. Yeah. It's good to be yeah. part of their Facebook groups and stuff like that. When we go to those kind of weird specifics, we look everywhere. And thank you for the compliment, but I am not Irish. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it, it's the joke is on him. <laughs> He's this joke with him.
But you should. <laughs> but hey, always take the compliment, right? Always take the compliment. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna put on this other Irish guy. This one here. This is uh. Is this another Irish oh, girl. Yeah, thank, thank you for your advice, by the way. Great competition, sure. <laughs> Hey so, Thomas, how are you doing? What do we got to say? How are you doing, everybody? We're, we're doing pretty good. good. We're doing pretty good. Um, is there any kind of qualities you look in for for every kind of person, or does it change between each role you're looking for? Changes between each role. I mean, it just we're looking for a specific um, character for each role. The, mm. Yeah, and you know, as far as general qualities, though, I think it does. You know, we're looking for someone who's attentive, who listens. That, like, when we're talking to them, when they're in the room, we can see like there's something going on upstairs. What, <laughs> what did you say? You didn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hate when I'm when I'm giving direction and the actors like they're like sat near near side and looking around. And I'm like, dude, pay attention. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm giving you the clues to get this job. Just stop and listen, you know, that's um, true. So just focus in on, on what's happening in the moment. And you'll, you know, that's huge. Is that what did you say? like people not paying attention? <laughs> A lot. A lot. Just like well, in okay. life. No. You, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how, how people freeze up in the, in the casting office. Pretty easy to do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I think I you know, a lot of them are, are misinformed and told, don't look at the casting director, you know, like, and so they you know, a lot of bad acting coaches tell people stupid things. That's I, so terrible. It's stupid. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, that, that had, yeah, I'm, I've, I've been held victim and parcel of that many times, but stop. What are you going to turn you into salt? I don't understand it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> We, we, it's almost 50 minutes, ladies. Um, uh, thank you. you, you can, we can stay longer. If, you, if you're tired, we can move on. I, I, like, I, first, I want to make sure you um, tell us about your podcast. You have a podcast you're doing live stream. Talk about that for a minute so these guys can show up and kind of support you and listen to what you got. Because they, they, they talk this stuff all the time, and there's a lot of good information there for you. So tell us about your uh, your. It's called uh, Two Cast Directors Giving... No, it's Casting Note, note uh, with, uh, with Rose and Kim. I'm Kim, Rose and Kim. And we do it about once a week. It's a nice little 15-minute show where we talk about things that we think are relevant for actors. And often we'll have interesting guests on and other times people like James Burns. <laughs> <laughs> he was on our podcast. Our, it's, it's on YouTube. So you, I, I was just hanging. I had to grab it, James. I'm I know. Sorry. I know. <laughs> you were a terrific guest, but I'm sorry. It was just a little too easy to not. <laughs> 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 so, you fit I right in. You fit right in. <laughs> we'll put the links up for that YouTube channel. Kind of and our Facebooks and all that crap, right? Right. Oh, you guys kill me. Right. And then I also have a Facebook page for actors too, the casting factor. So if people want to learn more about acting, go on Facebook to the casting factor. And I put a lot of good tips and information on that as well. She does. Yeah. I like to tell people to go to Kim's page because I don't want to do it. <laughs> if you go down into the description, uh, all their links are and their bios are below in the description. So go down there, click on it, join them. Cause again, they're great gals and they got a lot to offer. Um, let's see, uh, TKP, just, I just simply, I want you to get on, so get on and ask your question. You have a lot of great question. Hey, Penn State's here. Yay. I just got, got, oh, I got my, I got my sweatshirt in my hat. Thanks, Penn State. I did a promo for Penn State Esports. You know, that actually like a college level program for gaming now. Like they, it, it's a, it's a college sport now. Video games. Jeez. I wish I was in my college. Penn yeah. State has a team, esports team. So, Jesus. all right. So, we're, yeah. All right. Listen, I'm, Thomas, I'm kicking you off because I like because I have fun doing that. Goodbye. And uh, <laughs> Gerard, you're you're too pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm gonna kick you off. I'm hoping Darwin shows up. If he does, I'll put you back on. Hey, man. We'll talk to you in a week. All right. Peace. You're gone from the stream and let's see. All right, let's see. All right, guys, you got we, we got we got four more minutes. So if you want to call in, call in now. 
because I'm going to uh, I'm going to let these ladies go have a Sunday. They've been wonderful. And like Sunday. fun. There's been some really good questions, I have to say. So it's been fun. Yeah. Yeah, no question. The questions have been good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've got some nice followers out there. Really do. All around the world. Yeah, we have what we from um, Australia to Bahrain, Germany, uh, all, all in this, we're kind of an international group. Some all days the time have, zones. Yeah, some some days we get a real. It gets really crazy over here. We'll have you know a few thousand people at once, and it gets gets insane. So it's good that we're kind of calm today because it's easier to follow. Uh, yeah. But listen, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm going to cut this. is good good time to stop. It's almost a full hour. You Thank ladies you. are awesome, Rose. You know. Kim, you're one of my new best friends. This is great. And, I agree, James. Everybody I mean, needs to tune in to see Bob Layton next week. Yes. So right. fun. Oh, yeah. Kyle Jones. Kyle Jones fixed his computer. He wants to ask his question before we go. Okay. We'll put Kyle back there. All right. Can, I, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. That's better. Uh, all right. That's mega better. Um, I, will go in, I got another question. Uh, if I was in Call of Duty, working, working for Treyarch now, would I be a, a zombie character or a campaign character? <laughs> zombie. <laughs> a zombie. Because, yeah. Yeah. Because, you wouldn't even need makeup, man. Zombie. You wouldn't even need makeup. You could walk on it and nail it. I, I, I am already <laughs> scary. I am already scary. <laughs> because um, when I was a baby, my sister thought I was dead because I sleep with my eyes open when I was a baby. So it's scary. So I, she thought I was dead. <laughs> I mean, after that. A natural zombie, Kyle. You ought to play yeah. on that. Talk about, talk about an instant read for a character. Like, how easy is he to cast? For a, as specific as he is, it's, I, I, love, I, I, love like that. I can't do Nikolai Blansky for Call of Duty. Like, I am Nikolai. Uh, because, um, like, um, Nikolai said, I said, like, um, I go work, but no ammo. Like, it just, I can't do his voice. <laughs> I, I can't even do Wood's voice, but it's not yeah, that well, bad. Apparently, because, a lot of people are doing that these days, so get in line. Good to, good to get yeah. some training, though. Yeah, like, for James C. Burns, I, like, uh, um, yeah. oh, what's his favorite quote? You see the hand? We're going to take it. With that, we're going to hang up. Awesome job, yeah. Kyle. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rose. Thank, you, Thank you for having me again. Thank you. Thank you. Buddy. All right. Okay. He's, he's, not, he's an old buddy of mine. TKP, man, where's your camera? Let me see your face. There he is. Hey, Hi. Hi. Is he frozen? Oh, there he is. Is your camera frozen, man? There I'm a little nervous about so, hey, hey, man, don't, don't worry about being nervous. We're always nervous. This time. I'm always nervous around pretty girls. Well, my first and Rose time and I are so nice. intimidating. <laughs> you know, we are. Actually, you are. You are. Because you, you're so like, yeah, those smiles. A couple and of sharks so come know, in. James, I'm the one that asks all the acting questions and all these streams, and I appreciate I it. Hey, oh, you're the one. You're right, right. No, well, we, we, I we loved your questions. Thank you, TKP. And you, you, you're in Vegas, right? You're in Las Vegas? I'm in Denver, Colorado. You're in Colorado. Oh. Okay, well, close enough. There's some good stuff going on there. Yeah. 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 yeah, and the acting well, world, I mean, you know, it's, gonna, it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. It's not just Los Angeles. It's not just New York. And it's going to be less so in this time. It's everywhere. So, mm -hmm. so TK, you got a question for my ladies here? Um, yeah. <clears throat> so um, my, my question is that, um, like, how did you know the first time you met James and how did you know almost immediately that he was the guy for the job of Woods? We didn't hire him Frank for college. They, they, uh, they, they didn't hire me. They've never hired me, ever. Haven't I hired, hired you for anything. I tried. So, oh. they, Rose tried. <laughs> Funny story. Rose had a job for me. I had the offer. And they, <laughs> then, I, then I did a reading, and he fired me. <laughs> Wait. I ghosted him. Let's be clear. <laughs> oh, I auditioned myself out of a job. It's true. He texted me later and he's like, did I audition myself out of a job? I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? All right. TK, I'm going to move on to some more. This one's say hi to you, man. All right. 
Gonna move yeah. on a little bit. Catch Peace, brother. Yeah. All right. Uh, here's Draco. Here you go. What's up, kid? Oh, uh, I'm hey. doing good. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, I have a question about the uh, starting of acting, mostly. And I always saw it as something that's because uh, everyone says, oh, you have to have connections, not, you know, not necessarily about what you do. And is it really because it, you almost make it seem like is it really just as simple as sending in like a, uh, a resume? I know you have to have actors resumes. It's well, well, good if you have a talent off. agent. You know, that's helpful. What, Kim? You work your way up just like in any job or corporation. You work your way up. You start off as a day player. You work up to a special guest star. Like, you have to work your way up through the ranks, plain and simple. You know, no one's going to hand you a big feature film starring role if you've never been on set before, you know? So you start off with those, you start off with extras work and then you get a line thrown at you with this called a five and under, you know, we have five lines or less and then you go up to day, play. like it, you work your way up through the ranks, you know? And you have to be willing to show up. One of my favorite stories and it's said a lot, so I apologize if you've heard this a million times, is if you ever watch the series Friends? You ever seen mm -hmm. that series? Okay, so there was a recurring character on there, Gunther, who was the guy who ran the coffee shop, you know, kind of white hair guy. He showed up to be an extra one day and he jumped over and is like wiping down the coffee bar and they needed somebody to say a line. They threw it his way, he got it. And then they decided for continuity to try and bring back a lot of the same people as extras. And so they brought him back and they gave him a, so before he knew it, he became a recurring character because he was willing to show up and do non-speaking role and work as a background actor. Say yes. Great. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Just say yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, Drake, I'm going to kick you off, man. Thanks for coming by. See you again, Thanks right? Thanks for having me. Peace and love. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. And ladies, I think I'm going to, I got one more guy here. Needs to <laughs> All right. Hey, Saturn Z, what's going on? Saturn. And you're gone. We scared him away. Well, you know, I mean, sometimes they get the kick. And let's see. I think that's it. I think that's everybody. Well, that was All fun, right. though. That was a good time. I can't say how much fun it was for me. It, 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 an hour flew by. Yeah. Flies by. It was All fun. Right. All right. So let's, everybody, uh, this is Rose. This is Kim. Go to their channel. Watch their stuff. Uh, go down in the description. Click on all this stuff, follow them, like them. They're my friends, and uh, you do it. Or else, uh, I can't do that. I can't be there with, with ladies on the channel. Uh, ladies, <laughs> uh, Cam Rose, thank you so much for being on. And, uh, so fun. Uh, nice to see you. All right. Bye-bye we'll now. Thanks soon. for having us. Bye, Rose. Great Bye, Cam. Good to see you. Bye, Rose. Bye. All right, that's it. We just killed another hour on Sarge's live stream. Um, great stuff today. Glad you guys. I got a lot of out of that. Hope you did too. And as we always say at the end of the show, what's up, man? <laughs>